Todd, you've obviously been around, you know, from you know, a lot of different versions of this defense. I guess just kind of how have you seen, uh, you know, this defense kind of evolve in the past past year? Um, well, we, we all know last season the defense, you know, didn't play, you know, that good. So with Coach Jones coming in, he brought in a lot of different NFL um, schemes, things like that. So, I mean, I feel like this defense this year is going to be way better. I mean, the guys, it's, it's simple, it's easy. The guys can relate to it easier. We can play fast, we can make plays. We get a lot of different guys involved in different um, different things that they can do, different roles. So I feel like this season, you know, this defense is going to um, be a, a big impact for the team. Hey, Todd, Michael from Channel 2 here. Just uh, talk about your journey. I mean, obviously, battling back from injury to you know, have this last year, and, you know, what you want to get out of it. And why do you think, you know, the time's right for you to, to be the guy you need to be? Well, I mean, my journey has been long, longer than expected. But, I mean, everything is God's time. And so, I mean, if that's his plan, then I'm going to stick to it. But, I mean, the end goal for me is to win another championship. And I was hurt that season, so I didn't really play that much. So I want to be able to you know, contribute and actually play in the championship game with my new teammates. And um, that's pretty much it, you know. It's like I say, like, my journey has been long, so it'll all be worth it, hopefully. And that's the plan. Hey, hey Todd, Wilson Alexander from The Advocate on that sort of same subject. Just as a player, does your game change when you go through something like that? Um, or do you sort of feel very similar to the player you were at the time of the injury? Um, no, I'm not going to lie. Having ha having a knee surgery is different, but I feel like I've worked my way back up to, like, that level I was. But I wouldn't say, like, I was – I'm that same guy before the injury. But, I mean, I'm still capable of doing those things. It just takes a little more, like, gets determination and things like that. Because I always – think about that knee surgery in the back of my head sometimes. So it, that kind of that kind of plays a role, but it's it's not really a big deal. Hey, Todd, this is uh, Glenn West, LC Country. Um, obviously, Coach Jones has been working with you guys in safeties for pretty much all of the fall camp and everything like that. Just what kind of impact has he had on the safety group in terms of just communicating better with the secondary, you know, the cornerbacks and the linebackers and just – uh, how has he impacted you guys and kind of your confidence uh, in this fall camp? Well, one thing for sure, with Coach Jones coming in, um, he's molded the units individually. Like, the secondary has come way closer compared to last year. This, the, um, the cornerbacks, the safeties, you know, we meet sometimes to, to discuss different calls and how we could communicate so we're all on the same page. And just as a whole defensive unit, like, I feel like we're spending, like, more time together. Like, we're actually, like, getting to know each, know each other better compared to last season. With the, I mean, the season, you know, it didn't go in our favor. So a lot of guys had different thoughts and different things that was going on. But this season, I feel like everybody has bought into his plan. And we all see that, you know, this future can bring, you know, a lot of success and joy. So we all just fall in Coach Jones, and hopefully, you know, we, we can end this thing, right? Hey, Todd Jacques from uh, Channel 9. Um, if you could share with me, what is the importance of the corner corners and the safeties working together and how important is that to the success of the defense and, and what went wrong in that regard last year? Well, I mean, it's the I mean, the important key for the, um, the corners and safeties working together is, I mean, we pretty much feed off each other. So the safety use, you know, communicate with the corner. Then if the corner have a question, he asks the safety. So we all on the same page. And it's just different things like if – you got a tough matchup, you know, I can say, I got you. I can help you all a little more on this play, this and that. And compared to last season, a lot of guys didn't really communicate as well. So we will all be playing different things or thinking different things about a play. So that was like one of the biggest problems last year. But, you know, Coach Jones came in and we communicated a lot more. So I feel like that shouldn't be an issue this, a issue this season. Is it a case of um, kind of stepping out of your personality? Maybe there's some guys who are just quiet by nature, but they when they get on that field, they need to speak up? Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's like a lot of guys, including myself. Like, I'm not like a guy that talk a lot, but when I'm on the field, I know how important communication is. So that's something that, that I've, that's something that I've been working on, on this offseason, especially during fall camp a lot, just trying to be more vocal, communicating to the linebackers, the, the cornerbacks, sometimes the D-line if I can.
Hey, uh, Todd, this is William uh, with Tiger Rag. You mentioned you know, your journey and the, the, long, the length of time you've been in the program. Can you discuss a little bit, you know, Jay Ward's moving over to a new position that you've played. Um, just from the, from the role you may take as a leader, possibly to, uh, you know, Matthew, uh, Sage, uh, Derek Davis are all playing, you know, they're freshmen. So I just wonder what kind of role, you know, you're the elder statesman back there, so to speak. I mean, the role, I mean, the role that I've took on is pretty much just trying to get those guys ready as soon as possible. Like, I was a freshman at the time. I had John Bowder to take me under his wing, teach me the game a little bit. So I'm just trying to do the same to them and make sure them guys be ready to play whenever I leave and so on and so on. But you, you, know, you said that sometimes that the injury is still, or the surgery maybe, is still like kind of in the back of your mind. But like, how did you get to a place where it wasn't so much in the forefront of your mind that you could actually still play? That just came with me just playing in more games, especially like last season. Um, I kind of battled with it a little bit. My confidence started the whole season last year, but towards the end of the season, I kind of just was like, hey, it is what it is. I'm going to have to play with it like this, so hey. And once I started having that mindset about it, I mean, a lot of, a lot of those negative thoughts went away. I just went out and just played without thinking about it. Todd Scott Rappelay from the Advocate. Uh, Y'all are going to play a lot of zone this year, am, am I correct? Is that pretty much the plan? Um, no comment. That's how I Yeah, no I comment. Know, yeah, no so. comment. Yeah, that's, that's, right. that's a all question right. for Coach right. O. Oh, well, tell me, tell me what uh, you said. You said Coach Jones has brought some things to moments of the, you know, the pro style yeah, defense to, to uh, the game. Well, what, what are some things that you could you could say has been a good, uh, a good tip, a, a good, you know, a, a good learning curve for, for you guys as far as that goes? Um, really, uh, no comment on that one either. Okay, I, I think one more for me then. Um, Keishon obviously had that incredible end of the season last year. Now he enters the camp sort of as that, you know, that guy, number one guy. Have you noticed anything sort of different about him being in – you know, having that role on the team, like sort of being the go-to receiver as opposed to when he came in and, and he sort of had to fight for that? No, nah, Kayshawn is humble as I don't know. Like, Kayshawn comes to practice every day, compete, don't talk trash. He just go out and do what he got to do. And, of course, you know, we all know he's a playmaker. So one of the things I like about him the most is how quiet he is whenever he's making them big-time plays. He knows his role on the team, and he don't really boast and brag about it. He just go out and handle business. All right. Good job. And this is Doug Garland from Fox 8 in New Orleans. Uh, now that camp is almost or is over with, how fired up are you for not only the trip to L.A., but to prepare for another opponent uh, coming up? I'm extremely excited. It's been a, a long time coming for the season to, uh, to begin. And uh, we've been working real hard, and I'm really excited to see what this team can produce this year and uh, see how, how good the coaching is this year, too. Are you excited also just to, I mean, to get those pregame jitters back again? I mean, it's been a long time since you can think about a game right there. Uh, are you getting starting to get a little more nervous excitement that you know that you're about to hit somebody else in a week or so? Uh, I, I think I'm more uh, kind of nervous, excited that this is my my first, last game as a college student, as a college player in, in uh, at LSU. And so um, I'm very excited for the season to start, but I'm kind of sad at the same time that it's, it's beginning so so early. Hey, Ed, Wilson Alexander from The Advocate. Uh, two questions for you, if I could. For Keishon Butte, just how, what have you seen from him this camp? Because there's a lot of talk about who's going to be coming, you know, and joining him on the first team, mm -hmm. but obviously he's sort of already established himself there. Maybe how confident does he look now in this camp, knowing that he's one of the guys? Uh, he's definitely confident, uh, especially in his athleticism. Uh, he's been showing out this uh, spring in practice, and uh, he's been one of those guys that's stayed consistent. And, I mean, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with this season. And then just two-point plays. There's a rule in overtime now that you'll have to go for two a lot more often. Um, obviously, part of that was spurned on by the seven-overtime game. But how often do you all work on two-point plays? Is that something that's, like, fairly – uh, important uh, to y'all? Uh, I think that's more uh, of a situational thing. Uh, right now, we've been working more two-minute and uh, like end-of-game scenarios, but I'm pretty sure we'll end up working on that.
Hey, Ed, uh, this is Glenn West with LSU Country. Um, wanted to ask you about the two freshman running backs. It sounds like they've you know, kind of seized control of a lot of these yeah. opportunities that you get in the last couple weeks. And just what, what do you like about both Corey and Armani? What have they been showing you guys in practice the last week or so? Uh, both of them are some dominant runners. I tell uh, both of them every day like how good they are and uh, how they show flashes of like Clyde and some of our other great running backs that we've had. And I'm I'm just happy for both of them. I hope to see uh, good things out of both of them this season. I hope they stay healthy. And um, I mean, it's gonna, they're going to be some dominant runners uh, for LSU in the future. And I mean, a year ago around this time, you guys were defending champs, and it's a pandemic. There's a lot of stuff going on. I mean, now it's you know it's coming off five and five. It's like, how just different is this month of preseason compared? How does it feel in the locker room compared to a year ago? Uh, right now, we're just trying to get back get back to us, uh, the 2019 us. Um, last year was a little bump in the road. Uh, this year is not going to be the same. We realized what we did wrong. Uh, we have no leadership last year. Uh, this year we have a lot of leadership. Uh, we have a lot of experience on the team. And uh, I mean, ultimately we want to win. We're, we're tired of losing. Hey, Ed, Jock from uh, Channel 9 here. Uh, looking back on last year, if you could real quick, what was the strangest thing about last year? You know, for example, I remember driving straight into campus the day of the Alabama game and seeing nobody. <laughs> what, what, was, what was the strangest thing about last year? Uh, yeah, the strangest thing about last year was, like, having no tailgates. Uh, like, when we were driving down and walking down Tiger Walk, having literally, like, probably, like, 10 fans uh, on the Tiger Walk and no tailgates. It just seemed so empty and uh, vacant outside the stadium. It was a, a weird feeling walking into the stadium. Can you speak to now moving forward? I know Coach O always talks about generating your own motivation, but I mean, obviously college football is generated by fans and excitement and everything. Yeah. I'm sure you guys are looking forward to that this year, right? Yes, sir. It's kind of uh, like last year, it was hard uh, to, it's, as a football player, it's hard for you to kind of generate your own uh, energy and stuff because the fans provide a whole different energy that uh, your team can't. And so, I mean, at the end of the day, if if things like last year, we should have created our own energy, but we didn't really have it last year. But uh, this year, hopefully, we'll have a, a full stadium. Hey, uh, thanks for doing the uh, questions with us again. Kind of building on that question, is that something that y'all notice? I mean, like, we all talk about that in the locker room that Hey, they said, uh, you know, fans are going to be 100%. And, you know, the school just released uh, vaccinations or testing requirements. So is that something that, you know, like, y'all, like, even is on your radar? Do, do you understand, uh, like, what's happening as far as, like, the fan aspect of it? Or do you just show up on Saturday and excited uh, to see you? Right now, our focus is just, just football. Um, our coach, uh, Coach O, tells us it doesn't matter uh, how many people is in the stadium, we're going to play the game. And, we're going to dominate. So that's not been our focus at all. Our focus is just uh, UCLA right now. Yeah, I mean, this is an obvious question, I'm sure. But, you know, the, the, you're talking about the increase in leadership. Like, how do you actually see that in your day-to-day -day make a difference, you know, when, when you don't have it versus when you do? Uh, when people do stuff wrong, it's, um, I mean, the, the players step up and tell, and tell them to do the right thing. Or uh, it's not as much joking around. And uh, playing around in meetings and on uh, doing walkthroughs and stuff like it was last year. Uh, last season we had a lot of jokesters, a lot of younger guys just playing around, and a lot of older guys not stepping up saying anything. But this year we have a lot of uh, guys, including myself, to step up and say stuff. And obviously, you know, you said you haven't implemented those two point plays yet. But like when you get down on the goal line in those kind of situations. Is it something where like you have to have specific plays implemented for that spot, or you sort of take short yardage things and use them? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, we of course we got certain plays to like punch it in, uh, some short yardage uh, plays as well, uh, just to just punch the ball in. And, and they've worked last season, and we're gonna use them again this season. Hey, Ed, uh, Scott Rebelay, also from the Advocate. Uh, after a five and five season, obviously, there's always a lot of attention on, on, on the head coach and, and, and what his future might be like. What do you want? What would you like people to know about Coach Orgeron that maybe they don't know? And, uh, and you know, and, and what and the impact he's had on you in your time at LSU? Uh, coach O is a player's coach. Um, he's probably one of the best coaches I've uh, does it ever coached me. 
uh, as a head coach. Uh, he knows when it gets to business. He's, he also jokes around at times, uh, which is what I like about him. Um, he's kind of like a father figure. Father figure. You know that uh, if you need anything, just go to him. If you need to talk, go talk to Coach O. Um, he's helped me out a lot since I, while I've been here. Neil, how's it going, man? Uh, I guess just uh, to start, you know, walk us through Saturday's scrimmage and just kind of where you think the, the line is right now. Yeah, the defensive line, you know, we looking pretty good. We had a pretty solid scrimmage, you know. Offense stepped up from last scrimmage. They gave us a pretty good run for our Monday scrimmage. We had about an equal scrimmage. It was pretty good. I mean, just to bounce off that, I mean, <clears throat> obviously I know the defensive line has gotten the best of some of them. Just, you know, how would you kind of about you see the offensive line more than anyone? Where would you evaluate where it's kind of at right now? I feel like they're pretty solid. You know, they got a little, little banging up. You know, everybody getting back. They had a, they all on us back yesterday, so they pretty solid little front. You know, they getting better each and every week, man. I love going against, them, making them better. They make me better, man. We getting better. Hey, Neil, this is uh, Glenn West. <clears throat> Glenn West with LSU Country. Um, and we were talking yesterday with Ali, and he was telling us just how great uh, Andre Carter has been for you guys as a group, and so much so that even Coach O was telling us that he hasn't been as hands on with the defensive line um, as he maybe envisioned kind of, kind of heading into the season. Um, I guess I'm just curious, you know, what uh, what your thoughts are on Andre as a, as a defensive line coach and maybe some stuff that he's taught you uh, since getting to campus. Yeah, like I said, man, he, he's a great coach. He's a player's coach. We all can relate to him. He had a successful career at Cal. He had a successful career in the NFL. So, you know, we just buy into what he's saying, just be coachable players, and we just learn from him every day. <clears throat> hey, Neo, Sean from Channel 9. Uh, I just wondering real quick, can you reflect on uh, what it was like last year to play in empty stadiums with no atmosphere, and how much are you looking forward to that energy and those atmospheres coming back this year? Yeah, man, it was it was kind of it was kind of um, kind of down playing with our fan base. You know, we got the best fan base in the country, so having them back is going to lift us up. You know, we feed all the fan energy, so we can't wait to see them back for their first home game. And a quick follow-up, um, like, for example, the Arkansas game last year, you guys didn't know if you were going to play a game or not until, like, the day before that morning. Do you remember that and how strange things like that were? I remember a little bit. I don't remember as much, though. Thanks. And kind of a similar question. I mean, obviously, things are pretty different than they were last September. Like, obviously, that season opener didn't go know how you guys wanted. How would you compare just in the preparation for a season where you're at compared to, say, last year before week one? You know, last year we barely had a spring, barely had a fall count. So, you know, this year we didn't have all that. We've been preparing, preparing good. You know, we just, we just ready. <clears throat> and, and maybe just to bounce off that even more, like, I mean, you obviously, like how much looking back now some time has passed was the challenge of you coming back late, having to recover and all that. Like, just how different of a place are you in, you know? You know, this my career been a journey, man. You know, I came as a freshman. I ain't played much to probably around my junior year. I just kept my head up, you know, worked hard, got better each and every year. And now I feel like I'm in a good place right now to compete at a high level. Neil, just curious, um, were there some LSU defensive linemen over the years that played before you played that you looked up to or, or tried to model yourself after or anything like that? You know, I watched a lot of tape on Michael Brockers and Glenn Dorsch. You know, it was, they was two both great players for LSU, so I tried to model my game after theirs. Yeah, Dorsey, I mean, not that long ago, but, but 14 years ago, whatever it was, um, what did you like about him and his game? You know how he was just a dominant defensive line. You know, he got off the ball, was a violent player. You know, he just had a lot of success here. I mean, I'm not sure if we asked you this last week or anything like that, but obviously Glenn Logan's got you've been here with a long time and came back, been through a lot. I guess just how tough was it seeing him kind of go down like that and that little return, but just watching a guy like that go down? You know, this man both our last year, you know, it was tough. 
tough when he got hurt, man. I sent him a nice little text, tell him keep his head up, keep God in his prayers, man. And, you know, he's been working hard in rehab every single day on weekends, his off days. He's just been coming up here getting better, and I can't wait to have him back. <clears throat> hey, Neil, it's uh, Michael Cobbler, Channel 2. Thanks for talking with us each week. Uh, if you would, talk to me about the running backs. Obviously, John and Ty have been in and out of uh, practices and scrimmage, but Coach has been really complimentary of the young backs, uh, Corey and Armani. Um, you know, how much do you see of them, and what kind of greatness do you see in them? I see greatness in both of them. They're two great young backs. This is like the best running back room we had since so I've been here in 2017. The, the freshmen, they ready to play them all. We had a game them all. I feel confident in both of them being back there, number 22 and 21. I'm very pleased with they play this count. Austin, how's it going, man? How you doing? Um, doing all right. I mean, obviously, you guys have been just kind of banged up a little bit the last week or two on the O-line. I guess just, you know, right. what has that kind of challenge, for lack of a better word, been just kind of preparing for a season while knowing, mm -hmm. you know, you're kind of limited? Well, I mean, when you look into it, yeah, it's, it's always it's a little bit of a uh, – not really a setback in that case because you have guys out. But really we also – what people would know is that we have uh, those guys that are, won't be able to go full speed are still out there getting those mental reps to where they're not losing a step whenever it comes to the game mentally. So I think it's always – we've been taking the right precautions with all our injured guys, and then we're also getting a lot of them back. Like the past – like even yesterday we've had – I think we almost have everybody back. So really having those guys take all those middle reps and then they stay in their playbook. You know, it's fall camp. They really didn't have, like, anything else to do besides take middle reps. So it really didn't um, hurt us at all. So. Hey, Austin Garland, Gil, Fox State, New Orleans. Uh, how fired up are you that UCLA game is on the horizon? You can – you pass camp right. now and you can finally focus on another opponent. How excited is that for you? I mean, it's 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 very. I'm looking. I'm looking forward to it. You know, uh, my first time in California. You know, uh, first time really. This being in the plane for this long. So uh, no, I'm extremely excited. I'm extremely excited for the team, for the old line, for offense and defense, for everybody. It's gonna be, and especially the Tiger fans being able to get back to you know, what's behind me, LSU Tiger football. You know, so uh, I'm really excited for it, and I just can't. I just can't wait. So. It's hey, the countdown starting. Hey Austin, Jared Rose, or TigerDetails.com. How you doing? Um, good, man. How are you? You know, pretty well, pretty good, pretty good. Looking forward to a competition Tuesday. You know. Okay. Uh, Garland just asked you, I guess, about being able to finally start focusing a little bit more on right. UCLA. Does the lead up to this season, through all your years at LSU, does this remind you a little bit more of, of one year versus another, or anything like that? I imagine. Some similarities to last year with COVID stuff, but, but not quite right. the same with that uncertainty. But just all your years, does it remind you of any previous ones? Uh, I would say each – I wouldn't say it wouldn't remind me of a specific one uh, because each one of them had this, this, its significance to where it's not like each uh, season stood out on its own to where I couldn't really like pinpoint like, oh, it feels like this, this one feels like that. And like I think this one's just genuine like the other – <laughs> seems like 10 other seasons I've been a part of. But, you know, this is the fifth season, and I think it's going to be as genuine as the ones before. Hey, Austin, Matthew Green. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Jerry. Uh -oh. oh, I was going to say, this one standing out and being kind of its own, what, right. what does kind of – how would you – I guess we talk about team identities. What is mm -hmm. the identity of this lead up to this season? What kind of stands out and makes this one feel different from the rest? Uh. The major thing that you always hear, and then I think it's the the most used word of this past uh, team, like going into this season, would be like the overall camaraderie of this team. I don't think really in the past years the team chemistry, like it's always been there. You know, it's always been there, like for the years I've been here. But I think this is the most spoken out it has been to where how like how like like Coach O says, like you know how united and one team one heartbeat it is. I think this is like the most like the best example of that, so. Hey Austin, uh, Matthew Bruni here from 24-7 Sports. Um, obviously, I'll have to tell the truth Monday, uh, competition Tuesday. Right. Uh, what what does that do for y'all, just to have that kind of schedule, just to go through what uh, we all need to go through on Monday, and what was it like this past Monday after the second scrimmage? 
Well, yeah, you know, uh, Monday's usually for like a game week. We'll, like you said, Tell the Truth Monday. We get to look at all of our corrections, look at everything that we did wrong, and then build off of that, you know, because like Coach O likes to say to us, you know, the SEC is a copycat league. You're going to see the same thing every week, and then if you did one thing, they're going to try to expose that weakness so where you can be able to just grow from your corrections and then do better the next week. But uh, – from an overall standpoint of the scrimmage, I feel like it was a very like even scrimmage. Like the defense would get a very good, very good drive against us, and then also we would just come right back towards more of just a back and forth type thing instead of the first scrimmage. So, yeah, Austin, awesome. you mentioned you know maybe this is the most of the one team one heartbeat you've seen. I mean, are right. there specific things you're like? What are you seeing? I guess that makes you feel so good about that. It's, it's, it's very complicated to say, you know, because, like, yeah. it's kind of like the, describing how close we are and, like, describing, like, it's just more of you see everybody, like, gelling together. Like, you just feel it in the air. And, like, that, that feeling you just can't really describe is just, like, it's crazy. It's, it's really something, like, I personally, like, have grown to love more and more, like, about this team that we see every day, you know. But the uh, like the camaraderie and stuff is just is if you're here for just one day, maybe thirty minutes to an hour, you'll be able to just yep, I know what he's talking about, you know. Hey, Austin, this is Scott Rabelais from the Advocate. I've got a somewhat silly question for you, but I'm actually. <laughs> Being as you're concentrated on football so much, have you been aware of the milk crate challenge out there? And it seems like something that, that would be uh, it seems like something that would be off limits uh, uh, for for the football team to do. Yeah, uh, so uh, I <laughs> I have I have seen this milk crate challenge. I have had, I've had my fair share of laughs about it. Personally, I will not. Yeah, nobody's partaking in that here. I know any. I'm speaking for the O line room and the D line room. I know for sure. No, those guys are going to be doing it because I don't think milk crate cartons uh, have a max capacity of over even 200. So, yeah, I've been seeing them. It's, it's something wild, you know. There's always something different to go on, you know, some new little, uh, like, trend that people be doing. But it's crazy. Uh, I'm personally not going to do it, but I have seen it. Uh, have you tried it? I'm just wondering. So, has anyone on here tried it yet? <laughs> No, no way. No way. I got you. I got you. <laughs> well, shoot, you told us a week ago, Austin, you were going to challenge Max to ping pong to yeah. follow up, did you? I haven't yet. I'll be honest with you. I'm not going to sit here and lie to y'all. You know, I've been worried about just going through camp. But now that we have more free time, I'm for sure within the next week, before we play UCLA, I promise y'all, I'll play them. I promise. All right, I'm asking to get next week. So All right. right. I got you. I got you. I got you. Channel 9, how are you? I'm good. How about yourself? What, where your face at? I can't see it. There we go. Got the sunglasses on, everything. There we go. Um, I'm doing a story about how Kareem last year was transitioning from the Bulls to your Can you recall the Arkansas game last year and not knowing if you were going to play that game or not and still like morning? Yeah. Yeah, and then also the Arkansas game, and we had a, another game to where we kind of had like a sudden change, how you were saying uh, with Missouri, how we had to play, we were going to play Missouri as a home game, and then we had to go and we, fl we flew like the day before the game, uh, that Thursday. But uh, with Arkansas, it was, it was you know, we were, just, we were just treating it like every other week, you know, because we're not going to treat anything different than the other. It was a little different, you know, that we didn't really decide or we really haven't gone through something like that to where I believe it was the Thursday of that game week where the decision was made when we were going to play. But really, we were just going into it like a normal game week. So it really didn't make any difference. Thank you, Austin. Y'all have a good one. Oh, one more? All right, we got one more. We got one more. Hey man, uh, just before you go, if you had to put money on one player to successfully complete the milk crate challenge, who would be like the best and maybe the worst bets? <laughs> okay, okay, I'll say, the, yeah, the best. 
for the best milk crate challenge. We're talking about best, like he would finish it, or best it would be just hilarious to do. Which one? Because that's the. But I think best would be. I feel like. Yeah, I was gonna say like most successful, but most I guess successful. Like funniest outcome would would be good too. Uh. I feel like the best one would probably be. Best one would probably be uh probably one of the receivers or like I feel like. Uh, Kayshawn Bowie will probably do it because, you know, he has – I feel like he could do it. Stingley probably could – I see he could do it. He'll probably use it as a workout or something. But, uh, uh, like, any of those corners and receiver guys. But funny-wise, I to be honest with you, I would probably – if like, Big Cardell Tom is, you know, like uh, – I would like to see if Neil would do it. I would – I would – I would – I would try it, you know. I would just – but I feel like mine would be pretty funny too. Any other plus guy, like plus size guys, would be funny because I feel like as soon as we get to that second or third, our foot's gonna go straight through, and then that's the end of the clip. So that'll be <laughs> that'll be funny though. Thanks. Man. All right, y'all have a good one.